always a thing to come up with the name that everybody feels fits it, doesn't it? This name came when Edison was in competition. They were sort of trying to win the, the contract for, for bulbs. They managed to light up the town, but it, it didn't have the fire, it didn't have the warmth, and people called it the cold light. How we ended up working together collaboratively. I'd actually got an AHRC grant when I was working at a university to make a book someone put me in touch with. Keith as a graphic designer. And Keith was, was one of those people who I relied on. In a sense, we've got three galleries. One is in the middle, which is the corridor where we're going to show some collage works. And then we've got a physical manifestation of a structure, which is a, a scaffolding. Visitors are invited to go up and look down into this dish. Now the dish is like the crystal ball or the, you know, the, the pool of water where you see your past, present and future. It looked quite magical. What I find interesting about the VR piece, where there's a sensory overload, is the emotional response to the work that people give without any prompting. Many people have never ever been inside of a headset, so it's very hallucinatory. Nikola Tesla, why Nikola Tesla? It was just so apparent about Tesla's in incredible brain. He could visualise something, so he'd work it out in his head and he'd think, yeah, this is going to work. And then he'd park it, he'd put it to one side and then work on the next problem. Tesla ended up considering himself to be an automaton, a robot that was just driven by impulses. He really wanted to raise human consciousness and he thought he could do it through electricity. He was the first person to see an X-ray, although he mistook it at the time for what it, what it was but he understood that he had discovered it. There's a Turner painting that was x-rayed and you can see the face of a woman in the x-ray. So the x-ray interested us because of Tesla's relationship to finding the x-ray. I think the overall feeling for me is what are these hallucinatory mediums like a film and photography and what they are doing to human consciousness. The shows have quite often been in two or three venues. So each time we're locating it, we're looking around for ways in which the narrative that we're following touches upon the place that we're in. I feel like the motif is, is changing at every time, but this shape, it's in an etching by Dürer. Uh, it's called Melancholia. And he has a magic number square in the etching but it was made just after the death of his mother. There is this form, but it's an asymmetric form, so it doesn't sit in the platonic canon. In fact, it doesn't exist anywhere except in this Dura etching. I think it has a mathematics and a geometry that relates to a kind of melancholy. I feel like life has heaviness in it, darkness in it, and much of the work is about that struggle. The Dura shape, we used it as the pods that people sit inside of which is a strong idea anyway, because these shapes originally only existed in an etching. There's a whole array of <laughs> materials being used, and I, I think the kind of aesthetic that's being followed is one of, well, construction, and almost being able to see behind the curtain of how something is made. I've always been using the cardboard in the way that it's like a big model of a thing. But the cardboard is like a proxy. We take the film to be the reality and then the, the structure is theatrical and not so convincing. But I wanted to try and give a presence to the cardboard and make the films unbelievable. I think one of the most difficult things for an artist is to try to talk about their work in articulate ways. In some ways, you want people to come to your artwork and understand it through their own consciousness, through their own impulses, without you having to tell them a story about what you did and who you were. 